the last little change for this patch before it's ready to make some music is to make the um, timing system a bit more useful. So when I, um, in the first video, we just used a, a tempo object um, for the timing. But if we're going to use um, multiple instances of this in a patch together, then it'll be helpful to use the, um, the global transport in order to get them potentially running in time with each other. I'm just going to rearrange things slightly to get a bit of extra space. Okay, so instead of the tempo object, we're going to use a a metro. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to use two metros because we might want to use the global transport system to have everything running in time, but we might not. Um, so we'll use one metro that is hooked up to the transport system. Um, and so basically, any metro that has a instead of a value in milliseconds for for the, its timing that uses the max's kind of notation uh, syntax, timing syntax, will be hooked up to the transport system. So 4n stands for, this is the max documentation on time value syntax, 4n stands for uh, a quarter note. Um, To be able to control that um, timing, we can just borrow this um, text from the max documentation. I'm going to copy all of that. Um, I'm going to open it in a text editor. And I'm just going to do a kind of uh, a find and replace operation to change all of the line breaks for commas or rather a comma and a space. By doing that, I can now create a, a U menu object. And in the inspector for the U menu object, under the menu items attribute, I can paste all of that. And that will populate the U menu with all of the available um, possibilities for setting timing in um, the kind of transport system of timing within Max. If we were to just connect that directly to the Metro, it wouldn't be much use since the U menu is going to be spitting out all of that text. Um, however, we can use an unjoin to just pull out the first part of that um, text in each case. So that if we just attach a menu, a message box, sorry, we can see that that unjoin object is just separating out the first part of each of those um, lines, each of those options within the U menu. And that's handy because we can just pop it straight into the Metro object and have control over its timing. So this Metro object will be connected to the transport system and we'll have another one that isn't in case in case we want to run one of our um, instances of this B-patcher out of time with the others for some reason. So to select between the two, we can use one of these um, G-switch objects. So we want to send uh, select output from two inlets. That'll do. So if we connect our two metro objects to that G switch, we 
because tempo outputs numbers um, between 0 and 15, whereas Metro just outputs bangs, we're going to have to add a counter object to replicate that behavior. Um, and once we've connected that counter object, we should be able to just connect those patch cables that were previously in the tempo object. Adding a toggle to the switch will allow us to control whether or not we're going to be hooked to the transport system or whether we're going to um, run free timing wise. And what else do we need? We need to be able to turn the um, these metro objects on and off. So this toggle is a handy one for that because it's already in the right place in our presentation mode. Um, basically, a metro that is hooked up to the transport system, to the global transport, will will only run if the global transport is running. So the fact that mine is running suggests that my global transport is active, which it, which it is. Um, I just selected this little um, gizmo from the extras menu as an option to bring up this um, user interface for the global transport. However, if the global transport is not running, then if um, this metro object on the left was selected, then we don't um, get any activity down here. That might be fine, um, but if we wanted to just check, um, we might want to have it so that whenever this device was turned on, um, it just made sure that the global transport was indeed active. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to connect this toggle to a send object. And I'll just create a little routine over here, which will just make sure that the transport system is active. So sending a message of one to a transport object will turn the transport on. Whoops. And so whenever that toggle is turned on, a message of one will be sent through these sends and receives. This cell object will listen out for that. It'll output a bang whenever a one is received. And so by sending a message of one with that bang to the transport, it'll just mean that there'll never be a situation where this device is turned on, but the transport system is off and therefore it's not doing anything. That wouldn't necessarily... Um, wouldn't necessarily be something that you'd want to have, um, but I'm going to implement it here. So let's tidy this up slightly. Okay, so we've got some control over the timing of the metro object when it's hooked up to the transport system but for our other option we currently have no control so we'll add an integer box for that and now we can just add these to the presentation mode and we should be good to go so this user interface is looking a bit messy. There must be a better way to arrange all of these things. However, I think it's all there. And so I think this device is now good to go. Time to use it for making some music. Actually, I'm going to make one quick change to this user interface. So instead of having this message and a toggle, 
we go back into patching mode, we can use a live dot text object. That is basically a toggle, but it allows us to um, put in some messages. So down at the bottom, the text off label. And add the text transport. And on the text on label, free timing. I'm sure there's a better way of wording that, but let's connect that, add it to a presentation, and we can get rid of this. All right, room for improvement, but that's slightly better.